Hi, I'm Trina Lee. Welcome to MGIG. On this show, we'll talk to Jackson and Josh from the band Susan, and later on, we'll chat with Matt Ryan and Fred Negro. But first, Mark E speaks again to Mark Alexander Erber from Golden Robot Records about the future of his company and live music. I'm talking to Mark Alexander Erber from Golden Robot Records today on MGIG. How are you, Mark? Mark, good, my man. How are you, buddy? Very well. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much for, uh, for coming on the show. Uh, how do you see going into uh, 2021 now with, 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 with bands touring? I mean, I guess the whole overseas thing is, is going to be a, an interesting one, um, how they'll regulate to and fro, uh, you know, coming in and out of yeah. Australia and or going, going overseas. Look, I think, look, from what, this is what I hear from, you know, we deal, I live half the year in Los Angeles and obviously at the moment I can't. So I've, I'm, I've got my, pe my people in Los Angeles and the, and the people we work with. And what I'm hearing is the big bands, Guns N' Roses, for example, forget 2021. They're not doing anything till 2022. It's a write-off because everyone's pushing their dates back to October um, uh, and, and who knows what's going to happen. America is a fucking mess. There's absolutely no doubt it's a mess. Hopefully the right thing happens next week at the election and they can start cleaning themselves up, um, which is, we won't talk about that, but you can read between the lines. So let's hope that the, the, the uh, politically it, it writes itself. Secondly, um, unless there's a vaccine, I don't see uh, it getting better anytime soon there or in Europe. Europe's about to lock, get, go into lockdown again. Um, parts of Europe are a mess. As, as worse as it, as it was um, beforehand, uh, before it got better. So I think Australian bands are really going to be touring at home. I'm hoping things open up to a point where you can play to 400, 500, 600 people rather than 100 people sitting down at 10 tables. I'm hoping it's going to get better than that. But I have to say we've got it better here than most other countries and there will be some sort of touring next year for sure. Look, yeah. it could change overnight with the vaccine, as I said. So I think Australian bands have got to concentrate touring here, and then 2022 is when they'd really start hitting overseas properly. We've had a very good year with COVID, um, touch wood. Um, we've been able to get through, keep out everyone employed. Um, in fact, we brought on new people, new staff. Um, uh, all around the world, and we've been servicing the music, and and and, and everything's up around the um, around the world. But we're doing things differently. You know, the LA Guns album that's out on the thirteenth of November, for example. Instead of doing two singles, we've done four singles, um, and we've done that across the board, really stretching things out a little bit more, which I think has actually worked quite nicely because the bands are so. Um, uh, ready uh, to do something, and they're so keen. So we're trying to think of different ways to do things, whether it's yeah. dropping a seven-inch, dropping another video, doing a B-roll footage, doing merchandise, going through back catalogue like what we did with um, the Mercy Kills. It's just doing things that are a little bit different. So I think in this industry, we've had to think a little bit differently. Um, I mean, look, we're very entrepreneurial anyway with our group. We look at things differently. We didn't need COVID for that, but it's helped. It's definitely helped to look at, doing things differently than what you'd normally be used to it. Two singles, an album, two up, then yeah. start the cycle again. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I quite like thinking differently, and I think that that's played into our strengths, definitely. Yeah, one, one of the big positives, yes. It's really pushed people to think differently uh, and, and adapt and, and just think, what can we do? How do we get things out now? Yeah, and look, hey, and regarding Australia, yes, I mean, let's hope we see a... Uh, a return to some sort of circuit, you know, sort of like an old school circuit where you've got venues opening up again to touring acts being more uh, on the same page with, with you know, um, with, with that sort of setup, with audiences getting back out and, and, and supporting Australian bands a bit more now, maybe not taking it for granted, you know, um, we, we might see some of the old suburban beer barns uh, putting in, you yeah. know, t touring circuits again and uh, fingers crossed. Yeah. Look, I, I, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. I mean, there was a certain, some good touring agencies in Australia, there's no doubt, but there was a few that were getting quite arrogant. Um, you know, wouldn't return phone calls, thought their shit didn't stink. Um, I have no idea why, because it's such a fucking small industry here in Australia. <laughs> um, but I think that, that this has corrected a lot of them. They've had to really look at everything. Yeah. Um, so maybe it'll make a few people nicer in the touring side of things. Yeah. Um, 
but I think ultimately, uh, yeah, I think next year will be uh, quite interesting to see what happens as far as home grind. I, look, I can tell you, I, as I said, overseas forget. It'll, it'll be just all about doing things here. So maybe instead of just doing, you know, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, now it's the opportunity, instead of going to Europe and America and spending the money, maybe you will go to Perth. Maybe you'll play in Darwin for the first time. Maybe you'll go back to Adelaide um, yeah. where there's a bit of a vibe music scene. So I think there'll be more going on here. Um, but we're bringing some of our bands here next year. Um, um, we definitely want to bring um, LA Guns down here, and I've got a couple of others that we're talking to at the moment. So what will happen is LA Guns will come out here. Um, be great for them to play with Rose Tattoo, for example. Um, Mercy Kills on the, on the gig, um, opening up for them. You know, so there'll be lots of opportunities for our bands and bringing bands here to do Australia, New Zealand and Japan. Yeah. And I think that's what we'll concentrate on. I don't need a fucking touring guy for that. We can do all that ourselves. Yeah. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, um, that's where I think it's going to happen next year. And it's going to make you concentrate on home and close to home markets. Yeah. Yeah, well... Like uh... New Zealand. Yeah, well, yeah. Let's let's hope we uh, we have a a really exciting 2021 and and yeah, um, keep it local. We have to, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we have to. I think I think it's um, touring wise, definitely. And and as I said, that's gonna. If I can bring a lot of international bands here and of our own bands here, because they can't tour there, they're happy to do it, man. And and that means our bands on our label, like yourself, will benefit. Yeah, I am actually thinking two festivals together. So, yeah. um, bro, we've got enough bands now to be able to do fucking ten weeks of festivals. So, I think that that that's something we want to look at doing as well. So, no, yeah. it's exciting. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about it all. Yes, uh, look, uh, we are too. Uh, look, once it opens up, yes, uh, I'm sure some amazing things uh, are going to happen, and and it'll it it'll it'll be um, yeah. So it'll change. It'll change the whole the whole setup. Uh, I'm sure you know the whole Australian music industry and the, the touring, the touring model that we we've, we've, we know. Uh, yeah. So let's look forward to an exciting 2021. Um, Mark, I want to thank you. And um, yeah. Of course, of course, man. Thanks for having me on. Um, and let's do this again soon and, and pick a few subjects and. Thrash them out every month or something. Yeah, love to. That'd be that'd be great. You know, uh, well, Mark, Mark, thanks for thanks for being on M M G, and uh, we'll speak soon. Thank you, my man. Talk soon. All right. Buddy. Thank you. episodes of MGIG, we've often spoke to people who are more established in the music industry. We thought it'd be different to have a chat with a band trying to start up and what the trials are of doing that during a pandemic. I spoke to Jackson and Josh from the band Susan. Thanks for joining me. No worries. Thank um, you. you want to tell us a little bit about Susan and who's involved? Well, it'd be me and Jackson. I do vocals. Jackson does drums. We have another guy called Roach. He's the guitarist who's, um, yeah, who I live with, who I started the band with. Yeah. Um, He's new guy Julian. We're possibly <laughs> <laughs> still so, fleshing that out. Yeah, we we only just found a, a bass player, a, yeah. a solid one. Um, so you guys obviously like you formed the band over time. 
and um, but you haven't like you're still sort of building the band. How's it, how's it been this year, particularly trying to start up a new band in the middle of the pandemic? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had a basically a set for months, and we've just been trying to like get it as tight as possible. We've been trying to find a bassist, and we can't really invite them over. But yeah, um, like we've got a good now that restrictions have left up. Like we've got a good thing going. So we're just going to keep trying to write, trying to record an EP. Yeah. But we can't really gig at the moment, which is like half the battle. So. Yeah. But you guys were looking at potentially doing a gig before stage four, but... Yeah, before mm. we were just about to go in like to have our first like show. Um, but the bar that we were going to do it at got closed down and then, then the, the uh, yeah, COVID thing hit. Yeah. And so we right. got forced out. Like it hasn't, to be honest, I don't think it's been that bad for that bad for us considering like a lot of other people because like we all like me jackson and ash we all live together yeah plenty so, time to practice now. yeah yeah <laughs> that being said i we didn't fully utilize the time that we had <laughs> and also like that being said, also that being said we have neighbors so yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. so we, and they're all at home at the moment they're all oh, yeah. Home. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of the you know cutting off at 11 o'clock at night when you usually would look yeah. back to cut it off at like dinner time like six yeah um just to Keep everyone happy. Keep everyone happy, yeah, and you know it's it's loud music. <laughs> so <laughs> one hard. of the obviously you and and Roach started with the idea for Susan, and you guys it took a while before you found a drummer <laughs> that you were happy with. <laughs> I guess there's some challenges that most bands that are just starting up go through. So yeah, how was that sort of? Well, we, uh, and you just found a basis. So. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, fingers crossed, he goes good. Um, <laughs> As, yeah, as I said, we went, we went through, yeah, Jackson's number five and our, our first guy who was a very close friend of ours, it just, it just didn't work out and now I'll call Jackson our last drummer, like, and that's it for, for good. Um, yeah, he just, he had exactly what we were looking for and when we met him, you know, if you want to hear that story, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Shout out to Lars and Beck. Shout out to Lars and Beck, yeah. Um, Thanks for getting married. Yeah, we, our two, okay. of, two of our friends, like mutual friends, got married. And um, so I was friends with the, the bride and he's mates with the, with the groom. And we went to, the, to their wedding reception party thing. And me and Roach are just out of place. <laughs> <laughs> Looking around going, oh, we are so underdressed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Met eyes with Jack. Yeah. yeah. And then we're just, the yeah, we're just looking around and we just see one table and it's just this dude sitting there drinking a beer just like in the same mood as us and we're like, him. <laughs> Let's go sit with him. That's when yeah. you heard the harps. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, we just sat down like, hey, you look like you're, you're into the same shit. Mm. Like you're into music and stuff, yeah. Oh, do you play? Yeah, I play drums. I mean, and Ash just kind of went, <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. <What is> it? <laughs> yeah, and it was like two days later. We had had Jackson come over, and then that that the moment happened when we played through, and I was like, all right, yeah. cool. Susan became a bit more solid after yeah. that. Yeah, And look at him; he's cool as shit. So <laughs> oh, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he looks oh. good. Uh, sorry, off Susan um, for a second. One question I ask everyone who comes in: um, back to good old Rona again and obviously you guys you know you're in the band oh, should you... I put my mask on for this or <laughs> no it's cool so we're, we're, the mask. <laughs> we're following the rules but yeah um is sort of obviously you guys have been you know you check out the music scene here in Melbourne um do you guys have any idea sort of how you think the music scene is going to come out of this lockdown how do you see it being because a lot of things oh. are changing now with different rules and things like that I say like one of like either of two ways is either just going to go like completely all out and everyone's just going to be dying to go to gigs again or like every venue will close because yeah. you know shout out to the government <laughs> but, Ouch. yeah well i said it let's not make <laughs> let's not make powerful enemies just yet <laughs> I, I think i think the latter i don't know i, th I think that i think it, it's brunswick like we we pretty much live in brunswick and mm -hmm. that's like the the music capital of australia mm. It, it's not going anywhere. It's, gonna, it's just yeah. going to come back even harder. Once the restrictions and all, I, I'm not sure how it's going to go with still having certain restrictions and that. But a little bit different. once that's over, like everyone's going to be aching to get out to a show, mm. no matter what it is. Like I think we got a little bit spoiled before this because we're like, ah, oh, we can go see a show whenever we want. Like yeah. who's playing tonight? Ah, oh, seen them. Like let's you know, let's just stay home. Yeah. Whatever. We're but not like take it for. 
for um, yeah, yeah I, for I think granted, we took yeah. it for granted for a while and now that you you know you're stuck inside for seven months <laughs> like um, poor poor blokes and women in jail like i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure they're just like ah oh, whatever yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, i've been doing this but uh, as for the music scene like i think yeah i think we're going to be all right yeah and i mean it's gonna be back with a vengeance yeah mm. we're, we're new so we like we want to come in like we want to come in hard like strong as and I either well we're not going anywhere yeah. like if you don't like it then you know don't come to the next show but <laughs> you see susan pop up you, you'll, you'll be yeah. you'll be seeing that name and you and you'll be thinking like what the hell is that about <laughs> <laughs> we're just half a point yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so what's in the future for susan obviously guys you've just hopefully found your permanent you know basis um, and you guys are in the middle of recording some things, I hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're trying to set up to record an EP. Mm. Uh, we're trying to do it all at home. Yeah. And just figure it all out. So eventually we'll figure that out and try and start releasing music. It's going to be or, rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be trial and error. Yeah. But then yeah. we'll start getting more of a social media presence and, like, just, as he said, just going all out. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We'll definitely give those socials and the, uh, the recordings once they're out of plug. Sweet as, pl <laughs> plug it hard, plug it, plug, just plug it, plug it, plug it. Oh, yeah, you'll, you'll see it Don't on worry, we'll, all we'll, our programs. We'll hit you on the, uh, on the direct message just <laughs> until you get sick of it. <laughs> Deal. Uh, thanks for joining me. No worries, thank, thank you, you so much. I'll we'll give you the elbow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd reach, but distancing. Oh, I gotcha. yeah. yeah, thanks. Change, change. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming back in the studio, Matt and Fred, and how have you been? A pleasure. I, I've been great. I've, yeah. I've been loving the lockdown. <laughs> it's beautiful, it's finished. Yeah, yeah. Been uh, taking advantage of the downtime. Yeah, doing lots of art. Yeah, because you were working on um, the portraits, weren't you? I was, yeah. Some I'll, Kilda portraits. I've got probably about 20 sketchbooks filled with probably about half a dozen on each page. Yeah. Trying to draw everyone that I've ever known <laughs> in St Kilda. <laughs> and it keeps snowballing because they think, oh, they're that person, they're that. And I don't have pictures of them, so I have to contact people and stuff. Get say, pictures, yeah. Can you send me some, have you got any photos of you know, the ballroom days or the, the early Prince days when we used to play there and all that? Because there's a certain crowd that used to come and I don't have any pictures of them. Yeah. But I have to draw everyone. And how are you, Matt? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I've been good, thanks. Um, back at work last week, uh, um, so I had about two and a half months off sitting at home, which is great. I uh, got the next month to ready to go, hopefully next week, and then I've got the one after that yeah. ready to go because it's almost the end of the year. I might wait till uh, January, but uh, yeah, I was busy writing, uh, reading, uh, watching daytime telly, you know, Jack and the Fat Man was a personal favourite, uh, MacGyver, Cheers. Uh, oh, yeah. I worry Classic. about you. <laughs> there was no Hogan's, uh, unfortunately. Oh, shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be Jake and the, the um, stomach challenge man. Or something. <laughs> Versus the six million dollar man. Yeah. Um, who's who you uh... are? He's, he's from a two dollar shop now. The <laughs> six million dollar man. <laughs> the two dollar shop man. <laughs> uh, Monster Times. A, a what sort of interviews can we expect in the the new episode? Uh, Tom, 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 Ed, we got uh, Dave Faulkner from the Hoodoo Gurus. Yeah. Cool. Um, ben Blackwell, drummer from the Dirt Bombs, who also runs Third Man Records, uh, Jack White's label. We talked to him about the uh, Stooges Live at Goose Lake 1970 recording that came out recently, which was Dave Alexander's last gig with the band. Yeah. Uh, L7, um, Adele Pickavance, who uh, was in the last in incarnation of the Go-Betweens and also played in uh, the Dave Graney show with Dave uh, Graney. <laughs> um, New segment where I interviewed Damien Cow from Tism, where we just talk about football. Yeah, awesome. And uh, and one of my favourite bands at the moment from uh, Adelaide, the Sunday Reads. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, and also a uh, pub strip coming, and also featuring pub strip as well. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We've it's missed ten, that. Ten page epic. <laughs> ten, ten page epic. Had a lot of time to to put it together. Lot to report on. It's been a while. <laughs> Big issues we got to cover. Even though I only yeah. saw one band, I still have to mention that was Kim Salmon band. At Cherry Bar, which was which is now in the city. What the was old, the name of that the old, old pony? Pony. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's never going to happen again, is it? 
the um, your headline at two o'clock in the morning. No, I would have thought so. <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> definitely not. Yeah. Not for a while. Eight if punk anything. bands. Remember the, the last weekend of Pony before it became Pony, they just had like forty eight hours straight. Yeah. I think the Onyes were on at like like one o'clock in the Arvo on Saturday, and then I just saw them. I thought, oh, my job's done, and just went home back to English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's weird. It's like uh, forty eight hours now. Um, recently, with restrictions easing, peptides got to uh, get out again and play some music. How how was that? Oh, that was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It was good to be. Yeah. You know. It was weird that nobody could dance. Oh, really? I'm not allowed to dance because that... it spreads, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Except, yeah, and they're all sitting down at their tables. Yeah. Watching a band just furiously dancing, sweating. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to move around into the crowd like I normally would. Yeah, because of social distancing. Share microphones and stuff. <laughs> Um, I was going to ask you about your, your picture here. You found Oh, yeah, found I that just on the found that in Dalgetty Street. <laughs> it was just waiting there. It's probably been there for weeks, you know. And it's, it's 3D. I'm going to paint over it with, in my own, because sort of, I've worked out how to paint 3D. Yeah. So that'll make it, if you paint on a 3D picture, it makes it 6D. 6D. <laughs> Then, we'll have to get a picture of it incorporated into the backdrop. And if you put your 3D, gla <laughs> 3D glasses on and look at the 6D, you turn inside out. <laughs> you implode or something. You know. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm going to paint, yeah. Probably Maddie. Probably his head there. Oh, yeah. He's going to be the, <laughs> the saint of St Kilda. <laughs> because in the pub strip I've been putting these fake ads in for a fashion sort of a brand yeah. called Munster. <laughs> yes. And they sort of send ups of a Vogue type yep. full page ads. Get the glamour shot. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much just pages ripped out of Vogue. <laughs> and I painted his head on it. <laughs> we have to bring Pop. that in next time we do and this. There's always these gags about social distancing. And <laughs> I love it. I wrote a beautiful romantic love song about falling in love in the checkout, in the queue, you know, yeah. Coles. <laughs> Here in St. You just fall in love with this, I fell in love with this woman, her face mask. <laughs> this is the Mondrian print. Yeah. And so the whole, it's fiction, but you know, the whole sure. crux of the story is that you can't kiss and, you know, yeah. all that stuff during this time. So the chorus sort of goes, can't wait to take your mask off. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> that's so romantic. <laughs> and are the peptides going to hope to play soon? Or yeah, again? I think we're booked back at the Dogs Bar in two weeks. Yeah, awesome. So back in action. Yeah. It's exciting. I've been doing heaps and heaps of canvases and uh, all sorts of painting on wood and wrestling belts and no. masks. All sorts of weird stuff. So people and can purchase Vivian Gay has been doing what she does with her art. It's just beautiful stuff. This is a website hoping to launch where people can go and buy some of your art. Yeah, you yeah. yeah. But um, just need Charlie Barker to come around and take photos of all the new stuff so we can... Get up there. This is Rob Wellington from the Peptides is overseeing the, uh, the website now. Yep. Good pies, man. Yeah, good pies, man. Good pies. <laughs> Next year, pies. Oh, of course. This wasn't a real season. No. Yeah, this one doesn't count. <laughs> that, <laughs> people. Fuck it doesn't count. Smitchman, smitchman. Ah, I it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for joining me, guys. Thanks for having us, too. We'll see you again soon. Look forward to it. That's all for this week. If you want to get in contact with us, send us an email at ideas at studioemedia.com.au. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>